Do you have a bunch of biblical head knowledge? Or is your heart filled with the Holy Spirit of God? Do you know a lot about the Bible? Or are you living a changed and renewed life in Christ Jesus? Hopefully the answer to that is you're doing both. But if you have to choose one or the other, my prayer is that you choose to have a renewed heart in Christ Jesus over biblical knowledge. Ravi Zacharias was a man who undoubtedly had a lot of biblical knowledge in his head. However, the question becomes, did it affect his heart? Looking at his life and what we found out about what he was doing behind closed doors makes me question whether or not that biblical knowledge actually affected his heart. Jesus Christ said, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Because of Ravi's biblical head knowledge, he gained a lot of fame and a lot of fortune. But did he lose his soul in the end? One has to wonder. Now, I'm not God and I don't know. But while looking at this man's fruit, looking at what he was doing behind closed doors, really makes me question whether or not his heart was impacted by the gospel message that he knew in his head. Now, I've done a lot of other reaction videos to the Ravi Zacharias scandal. If you want to see my thoughts or my reactions, please check out those videos. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm not going to spend time talking about that today because I've already done it, but also because I want to focus on what we can learn about ourselves from the Ravi Zacharias scandal. And this is going to be a hard video today. Hopefully it convicts you. So hang in there with me because we're going to learn a lot about ourselves today. We're going to do some self-reflection. I know that's painful. I know that's not fun. But it is something that is vital. And we must do this every single day. So as a young man, Ravi Zacharias got right into the ministry. He'd been doing this almost his whole life. And I bet you at the very beginning of his ministry as a young man, he probably had a problem with lust. He might have thought it was a very small problem and decided that he didn't need to repent from it. It was something he could control. But over the course of time, as he fed that sin, as he fed that lust problem, it became worse and worse and worse. And as he gained fame and power and the financial means to act on it in a different way, it became almost probably impossible to flee from. And this is how the man will be remembered. He will not be remembered by all of his ministry. He will be remembered by his actions behind closed doors. People have said time and time again, I hear people say this all the time, get control of your sin. Just get it under control. And I absolutely despise it when people say this. Because that's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say, get your sin under control. He essentially said, obliterate it from your life. Completely remove it. Give up your sin. Be renewed in the Holy Spirit. Repent of it. Flee from it. Don't just push it down. Don't just try to control it when you can, but completely annihilate it from your life. Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 and 30, he says, If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. Jesus didn't say control your sin. Jesus said, remove it from your life. Get rid of it. Jesus heals him a man and he reminds him when he sees that he's well. In John chapter 5 verse 14, he says to him, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. I wonder how many times Jesus said to Ravi, stop sinning or something worse will happen. How many times did Ravi get that message? How many times did he hear those words from Jesus before he was caught? Repent of your sin. Flee from your wicked ways. Turn to Jesus Christ. You can't do it on your own. There's no way that you have the power on your own to control your sinful desires. Give it up to God. Repent of your past sinful lifestyle. And be renewed in your heart with the Holy Spirit so that you may live a holy and righteous life for Jesus Christ. 
And here's the hardest pill to swallow. And I know this is going to be really uncomfortable. But if you have a lust problem currently, I'd be willing to bet that if you were in Ravi's shoes, with his power, his fame, and the financial means, you would do the exact same thing he did. If you can't control your lust problem now, in its minor state, you'll never be able to control it when you are given the means to act on it in a different way. So don't just get control of your sin. Remove it from your life. And this isn't just about lust. Other people have other sins, and Satan knows what your weakness is. You need to annihilate that sin from your life. You need to repent from it. You need to turn 180 degrees in the opposite direction and run as fast as you can. Because if you don't, Satan will pry on it. And if you can't handle it now in its minor state, Satan will use it against you for the rest of your life, and it will only get worse. If you disagree with me on this, if you think that you wouldn't be like Ravi, if you think you're better than that, let me ask you a vital question. What would the church be like if everyone was like you? What would the church be like if everyone gave financially the way you give? What would the church be like if everyone served the way you serve? What would the church be like if everyone preached the way you preached? What, if ever, what would the church be like if everyone talked about Jesus the way you talk about Jesus? What would the church be like if everyone sinned the way you sin? Now that, my friends, is convicting. I am not exempt from this. And every morning when we wake up, the first thing we should do is go to God in prayer and examine our heart. We must make sure that we are in line with the will of God. Because if you are not walking towards God, you're walking away from God. There is no middle ground in this battle. So repent of your sin. So to recap, what can we learn from the Ravi Zacharias scandal? Three things I want to leave you with today. Seek heart change. Seek a renewal of your heart through the Holy Spirit over head knowledge. Head knowledge is good. Biblical knowledge is good. But if your heart is not impacted your head knowledge is worthless. And if you don't have that heart desire for God, cry out to God, and He will give it to you. Ask for a renewed heart. Be changed in Christ Jesus, and God will give it to you. Second thing, annihilate your sin. I can't think of a word that's stronger than that, but if I could, that would be the word that I'd use. Completely get rid of it. Don't get it under control. Get rid of it, because if you don't, Satan will use it against you for the rest of your life. And how will you be remembered? Will you be remembered for how you treated people positively, for good, and for God? Or you'll be remembered like Ravi Zacharias, for how you treated people poorly in your sin? Are you going to be someone who glorifies God with your life? Or are you going to be somebody that hurts others with your life? And if you don't have that sin under control now, because you're thinking that you can get it under control, you need to repent of it and annihilate it from your life, because it will only get worse if you feed it. And my third and final point, we are all corruptible. Every single person on earth, myself included, is corruptible by sin. We must repent of our sins. Not once, but every single day. And when we, get in the, uh, when we get up in the morning, we must examine our life. And we must ask ourselves, what would the church be like if it was like me? And then do what you need to do through prayer and through your own action to change your heart. Be renewed in Christ Jesus so that you glorify God in all that you do. And you stop sinning so that something worse doesn't happen to you. You see, friends, apologetics are great. They're really interesting, and we should as Christians strive to understand the logic behind our faith. But if an apologist isn't preaching about sin and repentance and salvation through Jesus Christ, they're missing the point of the gospel. You see, you can convince someone in their head that the Bible is 100% true, but that still might not change their heart about where they stand with God. 
And so if we are not preaching the gospel the way Jesus Christ preached the gospel, by going after the heart condition, then we are not doing what Jesus Christ is calling us to do. When he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, he's not calling us to convince people logically that God exists and that Jesus Christ is their savior. What he's calling us to do is to change people's hearts. That is the only way, the only way you'll truly be able to have an impact for God in this world. You must, you must preach the good news the way Jesus Christ preached it, affecting the heart problem. If people don't realize they are sick, they will not realize that they need a solution to that sickness. If people don't realize that they are living a life of sin, they will not realize that they need a savior. So convincing someone that God exists, convincing someone that Jesus Christ came and died and rose again, does not affect their eternal salvation. We must seek to change their heart. We must have sinners repent of that sin and flee to the foot of the cross that is Jesus Christ. That is our calling. So if you're watching apologetics, good for you. But make sure that the apologist you're listening to is also preaching sin and repentance through Jesus Christ. Because if they are not, they are mi missing the point and they are wasting their breath. Friends, I hope this message finds you well. I hope it encourages you today to go out and do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Convince people that the gospel is true through changing their heart, not through changing their mind. Christian friends, please continue to be the salt of the earth. Be the light to the world. Go encourage somebody else today because the world desperately, desperately needs it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.